Hey there, I'm Jamie Anderson and this video is about how I make my income. Everything I make is related to music in some way and I thought you all would be interested in how that happens. You're watching this on YouTube, so obviously I make money from YouTube. Those pesky little commercials pay me. It's just a fraction of a penny per play, but I'm not complaining. I'm really happy that you tune in. That really helps. I want to say a little bit about those commercials. YouTube chooses them and chooses the placement. So. I'm sorry if you're like right in the middle of learning how to play Amazing Grace and all of a sudden it cuts to a commercial for, I don't know, cheese. Sometimes they do that. Hopefully it's not too annoying and you can wait patiently until the, my video starts up again. It is just a fraction of a penny per play. Not that I'm complaining, but just so that you know, you could look at like one of my videos has over a million views, which is amazing and I'm very grateful for that. But uh, again, that's still a fraction of a penny per play. Also, uh, I have to deal with copyright claims. So if I'm teaching a song that is owned by someone else, and that's usually the case, then they might get a portion of that income. I never know ahead of time who is going to claim and who isn't. Um, I've been surprised in some instances, like I posted a Beatles song and I thought, well, surely the Beatles have, or whoever owns their songs these days, has some big company who searches the net for any place where they might earn a little more money, you know, like for instance me teaching a Beatles song, and no claim. It's like amazing. I've also had no claims, and I hope I don't jinx it by saying this, but I've had no claims on any Dolly Parton songs, which is amazing. I like to think it's because Dolly is supportive of musicians like me, but it could be that she just doesn't have a desire to make money from YouTube, or, um, or maybe I just don't have enough views. Maybe they only look at uh, videos with over a million views, I don't know. By the way, if you're noticing any noise in the background, my cats are chasing each other around right now, so uh, that's how it is when you record at home. <laughs> Sometimes you deal with stuff like that. I mean, do the big networks deal with cats running through the studio? I don't think they do and there they go. They're wrestling in the hallway. Okay, whatever. Um, some of you have asked about partnership deals, so that's where you go to a company and if you buy something, I get a percentage of that. I don't have partnership deals, um, mostly because if you're buying a guitar or a cabo or some picks, I'd rather you go to a local store and support them. Excuse me, I have to deal with the cats. Hey! Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> well, that was exciting. There was no blood, so that was good. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I was talking about partnership deals and why I don't do them. Uh, try to support your local music stores. Very often you get better service. They know you. Um, they they know their products. I've been into some of those bigger chain stores, which I will not mention, and you've got some guy who's a drummer in a rock band trying to show me acoustic guitars. Like, dude, you don't even play an acoustic guitar. What could you know about it? But when you go into a mom and pop store, chances are pretty good. Whoever is waiting on you knows something about that instrument that they're selling. And then if you don't want any help, then they'll leave you alone, which is uh, amazing. And if you have any trouble with a, an instrument or anything you buy, you can take it back. It's really simple. So support your local stores whenever you can. Um, I do have sponsorships, which is different. That's when a company comes in and says, hey, if you talk about our product in one of your videos, we'll give you a little bit of money or we'll give you free product or whatever. Um, I've done one of those kind of deals and I'd be open to doing more. In fact, I have contacted uh, a lot of different manufacturers about sponsorship deals like you know this guitar should be familiar to any of you who have taken my guitar lessons and it's a, a Guild D50 that I bought in 1990 I played in most of my lessons I love that guitar I've written to Guild and said please you know sponsor me uh, give me an instrument give me a discount on an instrument give me a little bit of money and uh, no response whatever <laughs> I've had um, smaller companies approach me about sponsorship deals, but it was either a product that I really couldn't get behind, you know, like a product that I wasn't, I didn't feel was useful uh, or well done, 
uh, or number two, a uh, product that I didn't think my viewers would use. And both of those things are really important to me. I had uh, one manufacturer who made, and I still can't figure out what this was supposed to be, but they were these little pillows that you were supposed to put somewhere on your guitar. I, I don't know, I mean, he was very nice, but I said n no to that. Um, I also make tips from coffee, ko-fi.com, and it's a really great platform where you can buy me a coffee and uh, it, for as little as $3, which I really appreciate. I know a lot of you uh, don't have a lot of money and $3 isn't a whole bunch. If you don't have the money, don't sweat it. It's just you being here and viewing my YouTube videos with those commercials, I still make money. So I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. I also don't sell merchandise. Uh, a lot of influencers have a whole list of t-shirts and mugs and stuff that you can buy. Does the world need more t-shirts and mugs? I don't think so. I feel like so much of that ends up in a landfill anyway. I just don't, I just don't want to sell it. So good for you if you're a t-shirt buyer. Go get them from somewhere else. I also make money from private lessons. I teach via Skype. I don't teach as much as I used to. Uh, my waiting list is long, but still you can contact me through my website and I'll put you on the waiting list. I will eventually get to you. I have taught group lessons in the past. I haven't done it in a while, but in the past I have taught at music festivals, at art centers. I taught at Duke University for a little while, which is very cool to put on my resume. <laughs> Especially since I have a BS from a state university, I taught at an Ivy League university. Um, I earn money from Patreon. Patreon is a really great platform where for a small subscription fee, sometimes as low as $5 a month, you get great benefits from me, like exclusive live streams and access to videos before I post them on YouTube. I thank you in public, so you'll see underneath this video a list of my Patreon supporters. Concerts bring me an income, although the pandemic kind of killed that. I did do some online concerts, which was great. I can't wait to get back to doing online concerts. I'm taping this during a pandemic. Not only do online concerts pay me more, but I get that vibe, you know, there's the energy pay, and that is really important. And I do get a lot of feedback from you all on YouTube. I really appreciate the positive comments, and that's good too, but there's nothing like being in the same room with a student or with an audience. I really, really miss that. Um, I earn money from my music. I'll put a link to my band camp underneath here. I have several albums, mostly original music. In fact, the music bed that's underneath this video is available at my Bandcamp page. Um, what you're listening to now is probably Emily, which is an instrumental, and then I may also tack on a couple of my other songs, and I'll list more information about that after this video. A uh, word about streaming versus downloading music. I don't earn very much from streaming. No musician does. I mean, I could have 10,000 plays of one song and make $10. I'm not exaggerating. So if you can, uh, download the individual songs that you like and make your own playlist. We artists make a lot more money that way. I also make money from writing. I have published two books. I've got another one that I finished that I hope to find a publisher for soon. And I've also written for periodicals and for websites. Uh, I was a longtime CD reviewer for Sing Out Magazine, which is a well-known folk music magazine. I've also written for uh, Jam Play, which is a guitar platform here online. So there you go. That's how I make my money, just in case you were dying to know. Please look around my channel. I've got lots of lessons for beginning and intermediate guitar players, as well as mandolin and ukulele players. Go to jamieanderson.com if you want to find out more about my original music and if you want to contact me about private lessons. Thanks for tuning in. It means so much to me.